Damian Lillard, aka Dame Dollar. Finally, the Trailblazers have freed this man in Damian Lillard via trade. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Damian Lillard being traded to the Milwaukee Bucks as this move shook up the NBA landscape big time. With Damian Lillard on the Bucks now, he will get the team up with Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton as they are now the favorites to win the Eastern Conference. The other team that was involved in this Damian Lillard trade was the Suns as this was a three-team trade. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So, here it is. Who won the Damian Lillard trade? Honestly, out of these three teams, the Milwaukee Bucks were the biggest winners out of the Damian Lillard trade. And I say that because the Milwaukee Bucks are now title contenders. Finally, the Milwaukee Bucks are now favorites to win the Eastern Conference. And the Milwaukee Bucks, they were already a pretty good team prior to this trade. But now they got Damian Lillard. Now they got a big three in place. And not only do they have a big three in place, they actually got depth on their team. They've got shooting. They've got defense. They got big men that can guard the paint really well. And even though Damian Lillard is not a great defender, guess what? what though he's surrounded by great defenders in Giannis Antetokounmpo in Chris Middleton as well as a solid rim protector in Brook Lopez and Bobby Portis when you look at this Milwaukee Bucks team this team has talent right now the only weakness that the Milwaukee Bucks have right now is coaching but shoot they want a title with Mike Boonehoser as their head coach Mike Boonehoser is not a good coach whatsoever when you look at Mike Boonehoser you think about how he's the Mike McCarthy of the NBA because of the fact that they both won a title but then you look at their resume and you're wondering how did they win a title and then you realize oh they had a superstar player at their disposal like Mike McCarthy with Aaron Rodgers Mike Boonehoser had Giannis Antetokounmpo yeah who wouldn't win a title with Giannis Antetokounmpo as his best player Giannis Antetokounmpo is the best player in the league or at least he's up there for sure maybe Nikola Jokic can challenge him for that but Giannis Antetokounmpo is undoubtedly a top two top three kind of player that's how good Giannis Antetokounmpo is Damian Lillard for years needed help on the Portland Trailblazers but they never gave him help now he gets to go to the Milwaukee Bucks where now he can finally get his help with Giannis Antetokounmpo where yes Giannis Antetokounmpo is a better player than Damian Lillard however Damian Lillard can now say okay if I can win a ring with the Milwaukee Bucks that's going to cement my legacy in NBA history and a lot of people are now going to give me a lot more respect because Damian Lillard is one of the most slept on point guards in all of basketball Damian Lillard has been underrated for so many years in a way I guess you can say that he's the Matthew Stafford of the NBA except obviously he's a lot better than Matthew Stafford and I compare Damian Lillard to Matthew Stafford because of the fact how both guys were friends franchise guys that were stuck on horrible teams that did not do a good job building the team around those guys whatsoever and then when Matthew Stafford requested a trade 12 years into his playing career into the LA Rams he basically joined a team that was ready to win a Super Bowl right away and they won it in year one maybe Damian Lillard can go ahead and do the same thing for the Milwaukee Bucks right now because right now when you look at this Bucks team they are the best team in the Eastern Conference the Eastern Conference anyways wasn't even that strong to begin with there's a reason why an 8 seed the team made it to the NBA Finals in the Miami Heat it's because of the fact that the Eastern Conference quite frankly did not scare a lot of people in there and when you look at the Eastern Conference you're thinking about the Milwaukee Bucks you're thinking about the Boston Celtics you're thinking about the Miami Heat you're thinking about the Philadelphia 76ers you're thinking about the New York Knicks but a lot of those teams quite frankly just don't scare teams in the Western Conference you look at the New York Knicks they don't have any offense whatsoever yes they can play elite defense but their offense is not good whatsoever outside of Jalen Brunson they don't have a good number two and yes I know that Julius Randle exists but I'm not counting Julius Randle because he doesn't show up in the playoffs and then they also got the Philadelphia 76ers in there they're also considered contenders in the Eastern Conference obviously though you can't trust them when it matters most because Joel Embiid is not clutch come playoff time Joel Embiid puts all these great numbers in the regular season but when it comes time to shine the playoffs this man usually folds like a lawn chair I'm not saying Joel Embiid is trash he's one of the best players in the world but there's a reason why he's the only MVP in NBA history to have never advanced to the conference finals at some point in his NBA career that's because of the fact that Joel Embiid doesn't show up come playoff time so obviously I can't trust the Philadelphia 76ers also because of the fact that they have dysfunction going on with James Harden requesting a trade from the 76ers so that means that they might have to deal with some locker room issues in there as well so also factor that in and then you also consider the fact that the Boston Celtics yes they acquired Chris Tapps Porzingis yes they finally have a big man however here's the problem though they paid up Jalen Brown a lot of money to not perform in the playoffs Jalen Brown is a star player don't get me wrong but he's not consistent and he doesn't have a good dribble game when going to his left 
class. Jalen Brown has got to be one of the most overpaid players in the NBA. Yes, is he a good player? Absolutely. But Jalen Brown is not worth $69 million a year. No player in the NBA is. Not even LeBron James or Steph Curry would be worth $69 million a year. Just because of the fact that you can't really build the rest of the team around that said player. Anyways, though, when you look at the Boston Celtics, though, they're still not a tough team. They're still going to get bullied around. Come playoff time, I love Jason Tatum. He's one of the top players in the world. But the Boston Celtics are not a team to rely on come playoff time because of the fact that Chris Taps Porzingis is a soft big man. Yes, he's seven foot three, and he is supposedly a good basketball player. He puts up good numbers. The problem with Chris Taps Porzingis is he doesn't put his stamp on the game of basketball. He's not tough. He's not going to be a guy that's going to change the outcome of a ball game. He can be a helper on a good team, but he's not going to be this guy that's going to change life for you. The Boston Celtics are not going to be successful in this year's NBA playoffs. They're going to fall short of their run to the NBA finals this year. So obviously, you got to rule out the Boston Celtics. Then, of course, there's the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're not better than the Milwaukee Bucks. They have a nice team, yes, but they're just too young to compete with them. And then, of course, there's the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat look really good right now. Yes, they were an 8th seed, but they were better than your typical 8th seed because they have Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Here's the problem, though. The rest of the Heat team is injury prone. Yes, Tyler Hero is an absolutely good player, but Tyler Hero is always hurt when it matters most. And then you look at how they have Duncan Robinson, defensive liability, and then they got Kyle Lowry, who's getting old. He seems like he's still a solid player, but he seems to not really be the same player that he once was whatsoever. And then you look at the fact how they already lost two starters from the team that made it to the NBA Finals, Max Struess and Gabe Vincent. So you also have to remember that this Heat team is probably going to be a little bit worse than what they were last year in the playoffs. So when you look at it from this perspective, the Milwaukee Bucks right now, they have the most amount of stars on one team. They also have the most amount of depth in the Eastern Conference. The only question that they have is coaching. Can the coach overcome his inexperience? And honestly, I think he can do that because who couldn't? Because they want a title with one of the worst coaches in the NBA in Mike Boonehoser. Now they got Adrian Griffin, who's a young assistant, who's probably not going to coach them up too hard whatsoever. He's probably going to let their guys play. And you think about how Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Chris Middleton, they can operate in the pick and roll game really well. You're thinking about how those guys are going to be really hard to stop. And then you think about how their defense is still going to be really good because they still got rim protectors. They still have wing defenders. They even got to keep all their star players. Basically, the only person that they really lost in significance in this deal was Drew Holiday and a first round pick that is not going to be impacted seven years from now was if I'm the Milwaukee Bucks I'm sure that I don't really care about whatsoever because you're trying to win a title with Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. Giannis Antetokounmpo is a top two top three player in the world right now which means that you need to be going all in to win an NBA title right now at this moment. Giannis Antetokounmpo doesn't and shouldn't care about what will happen seven years from now and neither should the Milwaukee Bucks. So I like this move for the Bucks a lot. Obviously I got to give this trade an A for the Bucks. That's not even a question to me. They are clearly the winners out of this. They got the biggest star. They didn't have to give up much of anything. And now they're probably favorites to win the Eastern Conference. I'm not sure if they're going to be favorites to win the ring, though, because of the fact that the Denver Nuggets still exist. They're still a really good basketball team. Obviously, you can't discount the Los Angeles Lakers as well. That's going to depend on the health of Anthony Davis, though. And then there's still the Phoenix Suns. There's still the Golden State Warriors, amongst others, in the Western Conference. So obviously, when you look at the Eastern Conference, yes, the Milwaukee Bucks are now the best team in there for sure. But they kind of already were the best team in the Eastern Conference prior to this trade, but now they solidified that spot for sure. Now, as far as the Phoenix Suns, yes, they got a decent return for DeAndre Ayton because they also had to give up DeAndre Ayton in this deal. If you're the Phoenix Suns, you got to feel pretty good about what you got in return. Yeah, you didn't get draft picks in return, but they don't necessarily need draft picks. They're trying to win a title with KD, Booker, and Beal. And when you have a big three like that, you have to go all in to build around those players. They got depth now. Now they got Yursuf Nurkic, a solid rim protector. They got Grayson Allen, a guy that can knock down the three-point ball really well. Then they got Nazar Little, a guy that can knock down his threes occasionally and play solid defense. And then they got Keon Johnson, who is a player that has potential. So if you're the Phoenix Suns, you got four solid players in return for DeAndre Ayton. I think if you're the Phoenix Suns, you got to feel pretty good about that because now you finally got depth onto your team. And then if you're the Trailblazers, you got to feel pretty underwhelmed about what you got in return. Yeah, you got Drew Holiday, a former NBA champion. However, here's the problem though. They're planning to move Drew Holiday and who knows how much Drew Holiday is worth on the open market. I don't think the Trailblazers have a lot of use for Drew Holiday anyways because of the fact that they already got Scoot Henderson and Amphrey Simons. So where is Drew Holiday going to fit into the rotation? And besides, the Trailblazers are not a win-now team. A win-now team plays Drew Holiday. A rebuilding team doesn't play Drew Holiday. And the Portland Trailblazers are clearly a rebuilding team. Drew Holiday doesn't really fit into the rotation whatsoever. So they're going to have to go ahead and flip him. And then they got DeAndre Ayton, who a lot of people are hyping up. But I don't feel that good about DeAndre Ayton myself. Because DeAndre Ayton, yes, he puts up numbers. But whenever you need DeAndre Ayton to make the key plays, he won't show 
show up for your ball club and he's going to be a liability for you. He's going to quit on you and he doesn't play defense whatsoever. He's kind of your traditional big man that doesn't give all his effort on the defensive end of the floor. That's going to be a problem for the Portland Trailblazers. Now, maybe he gets that problem fixed in Portland, but I doubt it. And then they got Tomani Kamara. I mean, obviously, you guys probably don't even know who that is, but he's a young player. Maybe he has potential for the Portland Trailblazers, but let's be honest, this player was just a throw in just to make salaries work. So I'm just going to say that about it. And then they also got three draft picks. Two of them are pick swaps in 2028 and 2030. The good news for the Portland Trailblazers is that they are unprotected. The problem is we don't know what those picks are going to be worth. And honestly, if you're the Portland Trailblazers, I'm not sure that you can even grade those draft picks out really well until several years later when that management is probably going to be gone. When that head coach that they got right now is probably going to be fired. And then they got the unprotected 2029 first round pick from the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, I'm not really sure what you could say out of it. And honestly, when you look at this haul for the Trailblazers, you have to feel pretty underwhelmed about what you got in return for Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is one of the greatest point guards ever to play the game of basketball for a guy that doesn't have a ring. And for the Portland Trailblazers to only get basically one first round pick in return, as well as just some solid players in return for Damian Lillard, you have to feel pretty underwhelmed about that. You were probably thinking about, oh man, Damian Lillard, he's got to be worth at least three first round picks, or he's got to be worth a future all-star player potentially in somebody like Tyler Hero. They didn't even get a 20 point per game scorer in Tyler Hero. They had a deal all set and ready to go for the Miami Heat. Damian Lillard said he wanted to play for the Miami Heat, and the Miami Heat were all set and prepared to give up Tyler Hero, which if you're the Portland Trailblazers, you absolutely need a guy like Tyler Hero. But for whatever reason, the Trailblazers said, no, we don't want Tyler Hero. Instead, they're taking this deal that the Milwaukee Bucks offered them, where their best attribute that they got in return was DeAndre Ayton. When you look at it like that, you have to feel pretty underwhelmed about that deal for the Portland Trailblazers. Overall, for the grades, though, I'm going to give the Milwaukee Bucks an A. I like this trade all around for them. They're now favorites to win the Eastern Conference. If you're the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to give them a B plus because they got solid depth in return for DeAndre Ayton. The only reason they don't get an A is because they didn't get any draft picks in return. But obviously, if you're the Phoenix Suns, you can't complain about what you got in return. And as for the Portland Trailblazers, I feel pretty underwhelmed about what they got in return. I'm going to give them a C plus in this trade. The Trailblazers did some good things in there as well, but overall, not inspiring to make for the Portland Trailblazers. I don't feel inspired about the pieces that they got in return. So that's why I'm giving it a C plus. So that is why the Bucks won the Damian Lillard trade, even though this was also a good trade for the Suns as well. While this was an underwhelming haul for the Trailblazers, remember, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Guy Talking, like the video, and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in my Instagram story every Monday. That'll be for the at Dustin S. Tran Instagram account. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dustin S. Tran and at Sports Guy Talking. Also, go follow me on Twitter at Dustin S. Tran. Again, go ahead and do those things that I just told you guys to go do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced peace out i hope you enjoyed that video want more sports guy talking the home of great sports content make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from sports guy talking go ahead and like the video comment down below check the description box on the video in order to follow my instagram and twitter also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.